bomb of so many things. Last thing I want to talk about is proof. How do you proof stuff? So first thing, uh, I know a few things I'm going to ask you is to like, I give you a statement. I say find the inverse of a statement. Find the inverse. And I'm going to ask you a question like find the converse. And I'm going to ask you to find the contra. Contra positive of a statement. So if you guys are not familiar with this, I do recommend that you go back to the textbook and read those sentence statement. So this is the if statement. So if you start with the if statement, P implies Q. I give you one. What does the contra positive of a statement become? Contra positive of this is not Q implies not P. Remember that's if. Those are if statement. If and when you write in Ken English, you are forced to use if. Now when we write in terms of uh, mathematical, mathematical, logical you know, sentences, uh, we don't write the if. But that already means if. If if not Q then the error means then not P. And these two are logically equivalent. So I do, I do leave it up to you. I'd like you guys to check this for me. If you haven't, uh, if you don't come up with the answer, what does the inverse means? Q implies P. I do want you guys to look this up. I do want you to get familiar with those three terms. Contra positive, converse, and the inverse. Those are very uh, used in mathematics for proofs. So before I go into like giving you an example of proof, I do want you to look this up, read your book, do some research. Again, part of you being a student is you have to do research. You cannot just limit yourself to what I'm giving you as notes, uh, things that we are talking about, you know, question you ask. So do that good extra step. Uh, be a good student. And so you want to check which one of these two means Q implies a P or not P implies not Q. You know, one of those means some, uh, one of those means not P implies not Q. One of those two means Q implies P. So you guys decide which one. I already gave you what the contra positive is. Contra positive is not Q implies not P. It's very important because if I give you a sentence like this, if I give you a starting sentence like this, if I win the lottery, if I win the Powerball, for instance, if I have a sentence of this, if I win Powerball, if I win Powerball, then Then I can buy new sneakers. Then I can buy. Then I can buy lots of food. And if I'm you asked to write the contra positive of this statement, what I'm expecting you to do is where is, decide which one is your P, decide which one is your Q. Oh, this is your P. Your P is the sentiment, I win the ball, power ball. And your Q statement is, I can buy lots of food. If you ask to write the contra positive, what I'm expecting to see is that negate the, state, the Q sentence. So if, start always with the if, I cannot stress this anymore. If I cannot, because not Q means you negate the statement. If I cannot, if I cannot buy lots, lots of burger, oh, lots of food, not burger. Why am I thinking burger? Lots of food. Then, 
if I cannot buy lots of food, then what happened? Then not Q. Then I did not win. Then I did not win the lottery. Then I did not win. Then I do not win the Powerball. Power ball. So please guys, I do want you to look this up. Because like on the uh, typical exam question is I'm going to give you a sentence and I'm going to say, hey, find the counter positive of this sentence. Find the inverse of this sentence. Find the converse of this sentence. That's just to, for you to, you know, to go ahead and start thinking. So my starting statement is if I win the Powerball, then I can buy lots of food. Uh, if I want to write a counter positive statement, I start with not Q, which was I can buy a lot of food negate that statement if i cannot buy lots of food then i do not win the, i do not win the powerball perfect so last thing i'd like to do is to show you an example of proof here because uh, here i'm at 7 1.7 here i just want to do one example of proof let me just do this i'm going to erase this okay So last thing I'd like to do here is, uh, let me see, let me think of a standard proof. Let me see if, it, okay, let me give you this proof. If, for instance, your proof go, usually the typical proof question is, if, if n is even, an even integer, Then n square is even for any number. So I'm saying if uh, you start with a number that's even, then the square of the number has to be even. Yes, that's true, you know, because yeah, if it's two, two square is four, it's even, yes. Four, four square is 16, even, yes. Eight, eight square is 64, even again. But it's not enough though, just exhaust all the cases of numbers. In mathematics you have to prove and you have to have a logical statement written down, plain English. So this is what I'm going to do. I can do it two ways. I can just do direct proof. Direct proof. Direct proof I don't have to argue about it. I'm just going to start with what's given. So if I do direct, I'm just going to start n is even. So since n is even, n even, what does that mean? That means we can write n as a multiple of 2. n is equal to 2 times some other integer t, where t belongs to the set of z. Where t belongs to z, set of all integers. Remember we say n is an integer, so two times an integer is always going to be an integer. No argument about this. So this is given to you, n is even. Prove that uh, n squared is even. So okay, so n is even means what? Means it's a multiple of two, so you can write n as two times something that's integer. Then, then what? Then we can say, okay, n squared, n to the square, that's going to be equal to, we know what the value of n is, is 2 to the t square. But what's 2 to the t square? It's simply equal to 4t square. But what's 4t square? 4t square is the same as 2 times 2t square. And therefore, I say that therefore, this is an even integer. Why is it the case? How? Not easy. Anything multiple of 2 is an integer, even an integer, anything. Multiply by 2, you get an even number. So therefore, since this belongs to z, and this is a multiple of 2, therefore, there's n square is even, and we are done. And just make a small red square like this at the end of your proof so I know you're done. Some people put the red uh, small 
you know, square like this. Some people just do that. Some people write as required. So it really depends on the person. When I do my proof, I just like to write at the end of this, as required, as you were asking of me. Here, here it is, I'll pull it for you. So this is a one-way proof you can do. I'm not gonna, at this point, I'm not, we're not gonna ask you anything to prove anything too crazy. So this is purely mathematical. Uh, it's the computer science programming part of this is not yet addressed here. Uh, so this is pretty straightforward logic. Uh, this is introductory. So if you do guys have a question, uh, feel free to send me a message. Let me know through email. If you do want to sit down and talk about some of those things, if you do want to let me know. So I pointed the most important things from 1.1 to 1.6. Hey, again, this is not covering everything. I do want you to still read your textbook, read the notes, and if you do have questions, come, do come to me. Uh, I think I've covered this. Uh, I'm hoping to make a video sometimes uh, this week on Wednesday, hopefully, on section uh, 2.1 and 2.2, because this is going to be engaging. So we're going to talk about set set operation because we're going towards function and again that's not anything new again most of you have calculus one calculus two background it should be handed to you because this is basically uh, mostly college algebra requirement totally uh, most of the other thing is just introduction to mathematical language and mathematical logic so as far as computation you guys don't be too worried about it uh, we're not going to do hard computation for this class, except we might talk about uh, matrices. We're not lightly talk about matrices and probabilities and uh, few computation. That's not going to be anything to worry about. So, here it is. Uh, you guys, if you do have a question, let me know. I put my Skype ID if you do want to chat with me. You can add my Skype ID as I'm always logged on my phone. I'm always logged on from my work computer. I'm always on at home. So if you do have questions, feel free. Feel free to let me know. You are expect, expected to be doing the reading. Hopefully you keep up with it. Uh, some of you have been sending me nice questions, great questions. I appreciate, I appreciate that. You guys keep doing that. I work hard. Your exam is uh, very soon. I already posted few information on what to do to sign up for your exam. Also, I'm going to post this week a practice exam for your exam number one. So I'm going to be posting this pretty soon on Wednesday, likely, when I'm going to post the second videos. Uh, I'm going to post a video with typical problem almost closely by the format and the content of what you guys should be expecting on your exam one. Once more, thank you for viewing this video. I, I didn't mean to make it too long. Hopefully next time I'm going to try to limit this to 15 minutes. Uh, you guys have a wonderful night.